Ancoito. một lần làm việc cả chuyên từ đồng nàng tập về nhà mình to cả đại cả xá hoàn chỉnh ra với cả các tổng quan mới đây ra nơi khăn ông đây cả một góp ở nông khuôn lục cái khu tổng kho cho một chỗ rùm được nông cây chấm nạc cả sạm nạc cá cả đập hàng hai cái xá này cứ ai chờ lưu mưu lực thang này mà đã ai cả xa tình lãi đại biện bọn nâng con hai ca phẩm mơ lời nông cam cao bởi phía ở phía bởi lý cứ tùm nông kia trả ca phá 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 mùi tháng ngày cứ khi phí mà xa mênh mùi bức hay nâng nữ phí mà xa mênh rồi xíu hay nâng ngày ní mùi bức bọn ta là ní mình chọc tí để cho nên ông dùm đẹp bọc bọc ôi lục khi xâm phón cho rùm vì chúng ngài ta nơi ai bắt tục khung khuôn cả cầu ông đi Đã bày tạm đàn Cái chẳng là cả sản là cả Nông cả Đạm bằng hai ai cả xa Đã thuốc lên đời đầm nàng xa bởi nhá Vẹ bọn nâng tui để tí Đã bỏ lô khư dầm phòn Ở khuôn ảnh Đã hốt đó chọc Ở mẹ bọn đo vị tí ca chung tư đầm nàng xa bởi nhá Và to cả đạm bằng hai ai cả xa Thank you, Mr. President, and good afternoon, Your Honours. During my last presentation, uh, I was unable to identify the ERNs for document E3-201 which, which, which was the April 1977 speech delivered by Q-Sang uh, So I now provide the English ERNs and they are of the, of the relevant of the passages that I read they are 0, 0, 4, 9, 5, 1, 2 and then the as we leave the the speeches delivered by Q Sampan during the period 1975 to 1979, I would like one further point of relevance, and it is the following. All of the anniversary speeches were delivered after the 30th of March 1976 of the Central Committee, which of course has been presented to the This is the document that my colleague discussed yesterday, document which issues the right to smash inside and outside the ranks. It is E3-12. And of course, as your honours are aware, it is dated the 30th of March 1976. Being a session of the Central Committee, of course, it was a decision of which Q Sampan was a member. And as I'm candid, the annual speeches that we looked at were all made after the issue of this decision. The next group of documents that we will take you to, Your Honours, are the associated documents that we will take you to, Your Honours, are the associated documents that we will take you to, Your Honours, are the associated documents that we will take you to, Your Honours, are the associated documents that we will take you to, Your Honours, are the associated documents that we will take you to, Your Honours, are the associated documents that we will take you to, Your Honours, are the associated documents the government of Democratic Campuchia and of the world public at large. The allegations of crimes 
being committed in democratic campaign. So these documents are relevant to his family and to him in person. But of course they are not to him because they are documents addressed to the government. The first document in this letter is to him in person. The first document in this collection is document D84. It is dated the 20th of February 1977, or rather the 28th of February 1977. It is a letter from Martin Nene, the Secretary General of Amnesty International, and it is addressed to Mr. Q. Sampan, the President of the State Presidium of Democratic Campuchia. And I believe we will shortly display a translation of this into Khmer. The original is in French. This particular document raises concerns about a repatriation of a number of Cambodians to Cambodia. And it is the relevant passage reads as follows. I'm writing to you today concerning a matter that is causing great concern in international circles in the hope that you can provide us with your comments regarding the fate of 26 citizens of democratic Kampuchea. The 26 individuals in question, natives of Samrong, in Surrey Sisophon district, Batambong, are reported to have travelled to Thailand on 17 October 1976. It is reported that on the 23rd of November 1976, the Thai authorities handed them over to the Kampuchean Democratic Authority at the Aranya Prathet water post. The next paragraph of that letter states, Shortly after these people were made to return, several newspapers reported that they may have been executed in Cambodia. One article reported that 20 of them may have been executed and that the six others were detained. It has also been reported that the entire group may have been executed after spending three days in Mongol Bure. In view of the seriousness of these accusations, Amnesty International appeals to the government of Democratic Cambodia to launch an investigation and to provide details about the fate of these 26 individuals. The next paragraph of that letter states, I would also like to call your attention to the persistent reports that in certain case areas, Cambodian citizens are subjected to threats and acts of brutality by some local authorities in Cambodia. The most alarming reports are being circulated. And there have been several accounts of citizens who are considered as, quote, enemies by some representatives of the authorities being removed from their places of work and taken to unknown destinations while their families are unaware of their fates. There are also accounts of some re-executions in recent reports in the case. That there is a camp holding 1,000 or 12 families Further down, the letter finishes as follows. As I pointed out in my letter of 11 May 1976, Amnesty International cannot comment on whether these allegations are true. However, our organizations and other international organizations are grave with the government by the government of Cambodia and are quite anxious to hear the government's views. It is in that spirit, Mr. President, that I hereby submit for your consideration the request to allow the delegation from Amnesty International or other international organizations to travel to Democratic Cambodia in order to address this widespread issue. And the letter ends with 
អាចសារនេះសរសេរថាយើងខ្ញុំសូមបញ្ជូនពួកទីបាត់ដែលថ្ងៃបញ្ជូនមកកម្ពុជាវិញចំនួន <coughs> ដែលជាលិខិតរបស់អង្គការលើកលែងតន្ត្រជាតិនៅខាងបុគ្គលតែនឹងមានឈ្មោះស្ដាយគ្នាឧទាហរណ៍ថាបុគ្គលទី 1 ອີ່ສະລິປີຍົມເລດນັມເບີ 15% នៅក្នុងជួយនៅក្នុងបញ្ជីឈ្មោះលេខ is the fact that this document was considered in the first trial, in the first case, and the transcript reference to that document, the reference to the transcript rather, is D288-4.28-28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28-4.28
to 551. Amnesty International continued to express its concerns about the allegations of crimes committed by the government of Cambodia. And in fact, on the 8th of May 1977, they published a press release. This is document E3-33111. The press release refers back to the letter that we looked at earlier, and it says the following. It is a one-page document. The International Human Rights Organization said in February this year it had appealed to President Hugh Sampan to look into the fate of 26 Cambodian citizens forcibly returned to Cambodia by Thailand in November 1976. The 26 persons, mainly farmers, but including any appeal or charge, were later deported to torture camps in Cambodia. Skipping one paragraph, the press release says, the appeal to President Q. Sampan was contained in a letter which also referred to reports alleging some of the executions and maltreatment of civilians by local authorities in some areas of Cambodia. As with previous inquiries made by AI to the Government of Democratic Cambodia, the letter has remained in place. 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 Your Honours, we will move on to the next document now, which again illustrates, or rather illustrates, because it illustrates the continuing efforts by Amnesty International to publicise the commission, the alleged commission of crimes in Cambodia. This document is D84-Annex A-1, which states that the commission it is an extract from the 1975 to 1976 Amnesty International report, which appears to have been issued in 1977. The Khmer ERM is 00597825 French 00697934. And English from one zero 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 four two one three. And the extract that I wish to refer to is the following: During the twelve months that elapsed since the royal government of National Union Khmer Grung, now called Government of Democratic Cambodia, came to power. An increasing number of reports from refugees have been publicised in the press. ในปัจจัยจนการเจริญที่การวิจัยคงเพียบชนะมาพร้อมประมวลนักจัตุรัมเมตรนอมจำนวนบุญรุกนอมจำนวนเมตรนอมจุรงเอวิสิตแต่ง
the next document is E190.1.392. This one is dated the 14th of July 1978. Again, it raises reports of human rights violations which have not been answered by the Guardian. It also refers to provisions of the Constitution. Which raises concerns in terms of the protection of basic human rights from the point of view of Amnesty International. There are two more documents which are relevant to this issue. I will only note them and I will not read from them. There are two earlier letters to Q Sampan. There are D84-2.3 D84-2.4 and D84-2.4. These two documents were not on the Rule 80 list, so I'm not presenting them to the Rule 80 protein. In passing, there are additional records of correspondence that relate to Amnesty International attempts to bring the allegations to democratic government attention and to have allegations addressed. Next document is ตัวหนึ่งที่เราบอกคือ the Ministry of Commerce of Democratic Kampuchea. There are a number of documents that are relevant to this appointment. I will just note them for the record. E3-182, the 9 October 1975 minute, which we've already referred to, where Comrade Hem will keep some responsibilities, among other things, for commerce, for accounting and pricing. In that document, Conrad Tuch or Khoi Thun was assigned responsibilities for domestic and international commerce. Of course, as we know from the record, Khoi Thun was purged. And of course, Conrad Thun, number seven in that document, warned that it was assigned responsibilities for industry, railroads and fisheries. And also, we learned from the record that Khoi Thun was purged towards the end of the decade period. And also, we learned from the record that Khoi Thun I'm going to essentially build here on a presentation that one of my colleagues delivered on the 10th of October 2012, where he looked at the creation of the ministries, so I will not repeat that information. But I will just refer to the relevant documents. They are E3 slash 233. Where Q Sampan is again assigned responsibilities with respect to matters of the purchasing of merchandise from abroad and the matter of banks. And document E3 slash 220, where you will recall Comrade Dawn's office 870 was assigned certain responsibilities in relation to commerce for three months, May, June, and July of 1976. That second document also contained a instruction that Comrade Ruth 
who is Van Rith, the Minister of Commerce, was to go to Hong Kong to initiate contacts for purchases. Hong Kong đang bay thu ca bằng ca tụi nhà nó tinh tụm nình. Lúc được xây cho con phải đi cầm hỏi xã xây vớt rồi bọc nhóm. Nước ngày đọc hai tổ lá bàn bằng hai rồi bài ca mua chùm nuôn đại bàn nhà chung được đưa phi cơ rột xuống bình trị cầm đại nước nông rồi bài ca đang ổn nuốt cứ cực xuống của bàn lực lai ông Pi mà mất đơn thuê cả cho cha chứa ngôi nâng rốt hạ bì bà ông trả chiếc hai chạp bị khai tội là nằm chất sập và mũi rồi bài cả đường áo nút cứ đang bàn bình chung đạch đời lai tay tự khiêu dùm phòng tài tận nộp chỉ cả bất ai xa đường áo nít cứ chỉ ai xa để dùng miễn hoài nâng xót bì rồi bọc nụ đối đại xã chế vượt của bà khôn bàn bình chạy hỏi miền ai cơ xa xa rốc mập hay bằng bầy chú bác đại khu nông nụ miền đọc bài cá chào chung đọc to từ khiêu sầm phòn nơi đặc nhau bàn bình chạy hỏi mập hỏi ai cơ xa đó nụ bẹt quân đà nâng dạ cá bì khai tà lá chất sắp ra mối đồ hốt đó chông hôm nay đọc bọc cà mà chìa và chìa thập tay My colleague has already shown two documents. But I will. 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 Ai cơ sa tìm mùi cư lạc bay L1 Pram mùi Pram bay Ai cơ sa Nếu có mình lấy ở bay L Pram mùi bay thằng đáy Chia rồi bài ca rồi bằng bác xuống Bên đây chắc cắm It is dated the 29th of November 1977. And it relates to a visit by Yugoslavia attending that meeting from the Cambodian side were Comrade Rith and Comrade Lamut, who of course is witness Sakim Lamut, who has testified for us. Đại bàn châu rùm nâng nông kê bì chôm nù Đọc nàng thang cảm bà chìa Ở với đây tầm khăn bẹp bòn tầm rạp cảm bà chìa Tầm rạp ai kì xa nên nú kì thà Ở với đại chú lọc bình chăng Ông bì tùm nẹ tùm nô Rồi viên Cơ xung lên chìa cám Hèm cư dương ai mơ khơi trong Thùm ai ấn xôn 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 Mà phây bà rằm bấy sai xa phần mùi Bà rằng lê ấn xôn 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 Học bà rằm mùi bà rằm Bốn bà rằm bà rằm bà rằm bà rằm on that page, the authors of the report state on the occasion representative from Ordnab Company raised several issues with regards to the equipment that have just been delivered to Cambodia. Following your guidance, we were able to settle as follows. Number one, we were able to settle as follows. Number two, we were able to settle as follows. Number three, we were able to settle as follows. Number four, we were able to settle as follows. Number five, we were able to settle as follows. Number six, we were able to settle as follows. Number seven, we were able to settle as follows. Number eight, we were able to settle as follows. Number nine, we were able to settle as follows. Number ten, we were able to settle as follows. Number eleven, we were able to settle as follows. Number twelve, we were able to settle as follows. Number thirteen, we were able to settle as follows. Number fourteen, we were able to settle as follows. Number fifteen, we were able to settle as follows. Kindly, brother, serve this for your information and have comment on these particular issues. It bears an annotation that it was already sent, or that copies of it were already sent to brother Hem and brother Hem. The next document in this brief. Series that we're putting. I can see that that the non some non I can see that the number of hands is E three slash one six three seven. This is a again a committee of commerce report from the twelfth of November nineteen seventy eight. 
ចោះហាត់រេខាគមិតីអូហ្វ៊ាមើសដោយគណៈកម្មាធិការពាណិជ្ជកម្មដោយគណៈកម្មាធិការពាណិជ្ជកម្មដោយគណៈកម្មាធ
and also document 18.68, which was another ledger relating to the import and export of various items. The two documents that I wish to show you today, again for illustrative purposes out of this larger collection, or rather we may look at four, but we will be brief. First, E3 slash 312. E3 slash 312. And this is a, a ledger which deals with the use of the credit, which I referred earlier from the Chinese government. The relevance here is that it is submitted to brothers Hem and Vaughan that is apparent from the annotation on the first page. The annotation is signed again by Rith, dated 22nd of May, the document itself is dated the 21st of May, 1978, and it is issued by the Commerce Committee. What is relevant about that document in addition again, to the reporting structure that it reflects is the exportation of rice that it records. This is at Khmer ERN 000 72692 and English 00 and this ledger records an exportation to Madagascar of 14,623 tons of rice for the year 1978. And you can see that on the screen. Moving on to the next ledger, Similar document dated the 20th of October 1978. The document number here is E3-2515. E3 E3 and the Again, it is sent to Bang Vaughan and M. And we see that on the first page where there's an annotation. It also deals with the expenditure of the loan of 140 million yuan. But then two pages on, it records some of the exports to China. This is at Khmer ERN 0078-3. And English 0078 that record the functioning of the Ministry of Commerce under what appears to be supervision by QSAMPAN. The first document is E3 slash 1640. E3 slash 1640. It is a letter to the Embassy of the Socialists. Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, dated the 15th of July, 1978. Again, it bears an annotation on the first page that it was submitted personally to Brother Hain and a signature of the 16th of July. The letter is of interest because it records and it there in the section which is now on the screen the Arrangements to export 5,000 tons of white rice and also, among other things, 
គឺសរុបសេចក្តីតំណែងនៅជោទីផ្សារចិនផ្នែកព្រឹត្តិការណ៍ <coughs> is also that the documents appear to reflect a centralized coordination of the gathering of produce from around the country by the Ministry of Commerce and then, of course, the exporting of that produce. As well as the coordination by the Ministry of Commerce and various other ministries in relation to import and export. These are matters relevant for the purposes of understanding the communication authority structures of democratic Cambodia and the authority of the Chief Minister of the Chief Ministry. The next subset of documents which relate to the Ministry of Commerce are on a slightly different topic. They correspond between the Ministry of Commerce and the cadre who were assigned to work in Hong Kong, the the company Hong Kong, whose name Hong Kong. has already been referred to in the course of this trial, Ren Fong. Ren Fong. And the relevance of these documents is, again, the inclusion of Q Sampan on numerous of the records. Document number E3, slash E3 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 slash as we will see in a few moments, and he was one of the managers and shareholders of the Renfong company in Hong Kong. In the top left hand corner of that document, we see an annotation which reads, sent to Bang Hem to check before sending it to Hong Kong. So it indicates an involvement by Q Sampan in this particular communication. The next document is E3 And this one, again, is a letter to SOC by the Commerce Committee dated the 3rd of February 1978. 
And on the first page of this document, again, there is an annotation which states sent to Bang Hem for comments before sending to Hong Kong. As we move forward, there are a number of documents in this collection where Hem is mentioned or provided copies of correspondence that is addressed to Renfong or to Comrade by name. And I will read some of the relevant documents without showing them on the screen in the interest of time. The first is 21.98 on the 3rd of March 1978 then D 161.47 from the 9th of June 1978 the next one D 161.47 from the 7th of July, 1978. Then D161.7 from the 3rd of August, 1978. D161.7 from the Hong Kong, to the company Renfong in Hong Kong, or SOC, the individual we saw referenced to Hong Kong, earlier, and all of them are also copies to Q San Pan, uh, his revolutionary alias Hem. What the next series of documents reflects a arrangement for the return to Cambodia of Ming Sok and his wife and the transfer of shares in the company which they were in charge of to another individual. The picture is somewhat incomplete because we don't have all the records but I will take you through the ones most, most relevant um, and indicate what their particular importance is for present purposes. The first is E3 slash 1902 E3 slash 1902 and it is addressed by Comrade Krin Comrade Krin had previously been in charge of the Ports Committee in Kampong Saum, and he has assigned that responsibility in standing committee minutes. But here he is reporting from apparently Hong Kong. Hong Kong. And in E3 slash 1902, he says the following: Greetings to respected Ankar. After having received a response from lawyers that they cannot assist in transferring the names between Comrade Sok and myself because the Hong Kong administration, the British, will not accept the signature and stamp of our foreign ministry. I rely on a Chinese person, and the most French, to accompany me to a law firm to inquire on the law and procedures on this transfer. And further down he states, if Ankar agrees with this opinion, please have the Ministry of Commerce make the decision and the letter of transfer as was already done for me, but leave blank the space for the signature of Comrade Nath. So she can sign in front of the lawyer. Comrade Nath, as we will see, is the wife of Comrade Sok. And the document seems to reflect a attempt to transfer shares between the, 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 the married couple, Sok and Nath, to Comrade Krim. And here he is seeking assistance from Ankar in that regard. The next document here 
that is that is relevant in this particular series is E3 slash 1907, and it deals with problems and it implies that Comrade Sok is already back in Cambodia. It is dated the 27th of October 1978. It is addressed to lovely and missing Comrade Krim and Nat. Krim, of course, being the new appointee in Hong Kong, Nat being the wife of Sok. And I'll read a couple of passages. We received information from Ang Kao about the report of comrades with regard to transferring the authority between Comrade Krin and Comrade Sok and the transfer of shares from Comrade Nat to another comrade. And then it deals with the problems of transferring the shares which appear to arise from the fact that Sok is not present in Hong Kong. The fourth paragraph reads as follows. With regard to Comrade Nath's shares, please sell them directly to Comrade Krim. A little bit further down, if the delay relating to the transfer of authority when selling shares still exists for this second option, Please, Comrade Nat and Comrade Krin, approach all together the talk before the Hong Kong lawyers and transfer their authority from Comrade Nat to Comrade Krin by hiring Comrade Krin to be responsible for the company. A little bit further down, no matter how you do it, the key issue is to provide Comrade Krin with power to manage the company as set by the rules of Hong Kong administration. There are records in the case file that indicate that during this period, Sam Pan continued to be included in correspondence between the authorities in Cambodia and the company in Hong Kong. Is E3 1771, which is also found in E3 1771. A letter of September 1978, issued by Fortra, the Cambodian the Commerce Committee issues an instruction for Nat to return to Cambodia. This is an E3 slash 875. It is dated the 10th of December, as I indicated, and it is addressed to Comrade Krin and Comrade Krin with love and nostalgia. And I will read a couple of excerpts from it. We are instructed by Ankar that Comrade Sok and Nath are to be given a new task in the near future. Because the party has opened an education hall for party cadre for the consecutive sessions through 1978, comrades have been able to receive some training before carrying out their new task. We would like to request that both of you properly manage the tasks in the company and jointly solve the remaining issues. Upon the completion of the tasks, we would like to request that Comrade Krim help facilitate a return to the country of Comrade Nath and a child named San Feng and make sure they are safe and well. And you see that letter on the screen, Your Honours. We would like to wish you both comrades very good health and success in your next endeavors. We highly revolutionary fraternity of commerce committee. This is a letter of the 10th of December 1978. Comrade Nat, the wife, to return to Cambodia with her child. We would like to wish you both comrades very good health and success in your next endeavors. Document that I wish to present is E3 slash 1532. E3 slash 1532. It is a prisoner sheet from S21 for an individual named Ing Sok. The same individual who we saw addressed in those 
ហើយកសារបន្ទាប់ទៅក្នុងស្ក្រីនលេខខ្ញុំសូមបង្ហាញនៅលេខអេក្រង់ផងដែរនោះគឺហើយ Under number three, is indicated as member of the Committee of State Commerce stationed in Hong Kong. Her place of arrest, again, State Commerce, and the date of arrest, the 30th of December, 1970. In summary, Having been directed to return to Cambodia on the 10th of December 1978, by the 30th of December 1978, Comrade Nath was S21. Document E3 slash 1533, the last one we looked at, contains also the photographs of the individuals concerned placed on the case file by the co-investigating judges. The first two documents contain pictures of the sock and the three candles displayed on the screen. So these, these are the photographs of Ing Sok during his time in Cambodia. And if he's called out, and to the next page, this is Ing Sok and his wife. How he is not in Hong Kong. Further down, again, a photograph from Hong Kong of Ing Sok. And lastly, on the last page, a photograph of Palva in her office in Hong Kong. A photograph from her prisoner file has 21 on the right-hand side. That concludes the section dealing with the Ministry of Commerce and the role of Ji Sampan. Next year, on as we would like to turn to a, a set of documents which contain statements by Kyo which relate to the Commission of Crimes in Cambodia. They are relevant because some of them are made shortly after the end of the democratic Cambodia period. They are relevant because some of them are made shortly after the end of the Statement made by him. Document E3/628. E3/628 is a Time Magazine article entitled Time Magazine. It's dated the 10th of March. It contains a what is ascribed as a rare interview with Q. Sampan. We will read one portion of that interview. This begins at Khmer ERN 007913 
question. Do you feel that your government made mistakes during the four years that the Khmer Rouge held power in Phnom Penh? Answer. After our war against the pro-Western government, we had to face many complicated problems. But we had one major achievement. We solved the big problem for our people. Of course, there were some shortcomings. Even our current prime minister had some shortcomings. Various estimates have been made of the number of people who were killed while we were in power. How many people were killed? We never engaged in mass killings. There was no reason for us to carry out the so-called genocide. They stopped all the killings. The question is, how many people were animated when we made your revolution? All I can say is that the number was not more than 10,000. All I can say is that the number was not more than 10,000. Question. So you are saying that the almost unanimous testimony of refugees in Thailand and that of other witnesses is incorrect. Answer. They are not correct. Very few people were against us. That is why we have succeeded in conducting our people's war against the Vietnamese invaders for the past year. We could not have done this unless we had the support of the people about those executions. That is in the past. That is in the past. The next document in this series of statements by Kusampan on the crimes committed during the Khmer Rouge period is document E3-203. It is a a rather lengthy transcript of a taped interview with Kusampan conducted by Steve Hedder. There are numerous relevant passages um, including those relating to the then war with Vietnam and the government in Phnom Penh because that post dates the 79th period so I will not refer to it. But then the document moves on to deal with allegations of what the Communist Party of Kampuchea had done, the allegations of criminal activity. And they begin, the section begins at And I'll read selectively from, from a passage here because it is a very long document. Where Kusampan says the following, quote, However, there were innocent people whose lives were affected. I would like to stress that they were affected by Yuan agents, by Khmer people who were Yuan undercover agents in our authority lines. Those people held important positions. A little bit further down. As you may know, during the first Indochina War, there were Vietnamese cadre and army carrying out activities in Cambodia and controlling resistance movements in Cambodia. It was then that they, that when they established their agents to serve their Indochina strategies, since, since then, year by year, those agents had gained more and more important positions, and they had worked undercover in our movements. 
A little bit further down, he discusses the incident of the attempted arrests of South Indian East Asia Secretary. That section is as follows. Quote, I would like to tell you that Hang Sam Ring, for example, was the commander of a division that had been organized by the UN. Question, since the 1970s? Answer, since the 1970s. I fought against him to force him to return the troops. Question, when did he escape to UN territory? In 1977. Answer, in 1977. It was in 1977 or 1978 that we started fighting. Question, was it before the event of South Pyeong Hai? Answer, during the event of South Pyeong, he escaped to the UN. Question, in 1977. You have mentioned that those people had distorted the line. I would like to ask you whether those people played a role in the formulation of the policy. This is a discussion. By way of context, this is a discussion of people who Kusan Pan had alleged had distorted the policy. The of the party. Yes. Answer. Yes. They had. They had. Because they were important people in charge of important positions. Thus, they participated in the formulation of policy. Since the 1960s, we formulated independent lines and principles in attempting to control the destiny of the people's movement independently. At that time, those people were there. They were UN agents. They served the UN Indochina strategy. A little bit further down, they adapted themselves and gradually they achieved more and more important positions. Between 1975 to 1978, they carried out their actions. A little bit further down, question. In 1975, what percentage of them were in the senior ranks of the party? in the Central Committee or in the Standing Committee? Answer, there were men. Question, half. Answer, less than half in the Central Committee, but nearly half in the Standing Committee. The relevance of that passage, of course, Your Honours, is that numerous members of the Central Committee and the Standing Committee were purged during the Democratic Republic of Korea according to the evidence on the file. The next passage I would read is from Hang Sam Rim and Hang Sam Rim. The next passage I would read relates to the possibility or question whether or not some of the arrested cadres were innocent. This is a committee around 033843. French 00434236 and English 00424015. Question. I would like to ask you if among the party's world renowned leaders who have died since 1975, were there any of them who were innocent? Were they killed because they had been implicated? Or were they killed by the UN agents? Answer. The case did not occur to senior leaders, but it occurred to some cadre. Question cadre? Answer, because the UN agents have accused them of abuse. A couple of paragraphs below that. Question. What I wanted to ask you at the time was about anyone who was accused of being either CIA agents or UN agents. I want to ask if any of them were accused of being UN agents in order to kill the patriots. Did that happen among the other agents? Did that happen among the other agents? Response. Yes. There was a comrade in the West. He was an old man. He was accused by the UN agents. They were responsible for that. They accused him. 
However, they were not successful because we investigated the case in a timely manner. And before I leave that document, I will just indicate that the time of the interview or the date of the interview is apparently the year 1981. As we move forward, a brief reference to a document I actually discussed during our presentations on the historical background. E3-687, E3-687. This is a New York Times article dated the 9th of July 1982, which records a response by to the effect that he had participated in the collection. ไปสร้างมุมมองสําหรับให้ให้เป็นโอกาสสําหรับมาเพลินที่จะไปเพลินที่เธอโหลดมาบ่ายพรุ่งนี้ที่จะมาเกิดกับตํานาการสําหรับ